that is one stinky mother box. And this <laughs> is... <laughs> oh, dear. That's what I'm talking about, Pat. Let's go. Oh, dear. I should know, too. Hey, everybody. This is Pappy, recording from Louisville, Colorado. Uh, your host tonight for the much-anticipated, much mythologized almost Zack Snyder cut uh we have a very interesting boat here tonight we don't have superhero correspondent PK we don't have uh says yes to everything BK so we'll see how this podcast shakes out but let's go east to east I did prime you boys on this question and feel free to indulge in multiple answers but what was an IP that's been released that you were really really excited for that you were really anticipating um Good or bad, but just the anticipation is the key to this question. Kylo, I think you're the eastest to start off with. I'm the weestest. Sorry, weestest. Yeah. <laughs> I get them confused. <laughs> That's right. Should I go anyway? Or are we going Jordan first? <laughs> no, definitely weest to east. Okay. Yeah, so when I was a kid, there was one movie that, uh, similar to this actually, now that I think about it, I had like the most insane hype for, and I was thinking about like every day. That's how much I was hyped for this movie. I was thinking about it. I was like, this movie is going to change my life. Like, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be the greatest thing I've ever seen. That movie was Batman and Robin. Mm. Mm. I thought Batman and Robin was just going to be the greatest thing I've ever seen in my little 10-year-old brain. Stevie. (laughs) Stevie. Because I saw that movie in theaters too, and I was so excited for it. And as a child, I knew how bad it was. The marketing for that movie was insane. Like it was everywhere, and they kept showing Batman with that blue and silver costume, yep, which he only yep. wears for a very small portion of the movie. Um, bad movie, obviously, but the hype was real for that. That was the first time I was really let down, but I did still like the movie, but still let down. Um, a couple of quick others. X-Men 3. I was really looking forward to that off of X-Men 2. I was really into the X-Men movies when they first came out. The first one, I was like, this is a good starting point. Okay, it's going to get good. 2 was good. 3 sucked. And more Mm. recently, a big one for me was The Force Awakens, which actually (laughs) delivered for me in a big bad way. So I was really happy to see that. I was really hyped for it. Uh, Those are my three. It's a nice mixed bag there. Some good, some bad, and some ugly, as we like to say <laughs> around here. I'll, uh, Gosh. I'll go next. Uh, this is, your, like I said, your host tonight, Pappy, recording from Louisville, Colorado. Uh, I was really into the series of Unfortunate Events books when I was like a really little oh, kid. Oh, like, deep I, cut. <laughs> I found those books like really early, and like I was like reading them as they were coming out, and that was like a really exciting thing. Like the anticipation of a book coming out, like waiting years for that. Uh, then the movie mm-hmm. came out with Jim Carrey. I remember being very <laughs> meh about it, not blown away, uh, not like not really enjoying it all. And then one last one too, Stevie. I don't know if you remember this. We were in line at Meyer for the release of Harry Potter book seven, whatever book it's called. Book seven. I remember. Yeah, I remember that really well, actually. You didn't even buy it. You just came to hang out. Yeah, you were so excited for it. I didn't even start to read like the first books yet, and you were super pumped. So I was like, I'll go hang out with Pap. I went to bed. I woke up. I read it all in a day. I remember that was the day that David Beckham made his debut in the MLS or something. It was just like a weird day because I was like shell-shocked from reading all day and like watching shitty American soccer. It was a good time. But uh, I don't. It, now it gets to be sort of a clusterfuck as we move into the Midwest. Who among you is weestest traditionally? Mikey. Okay. Uh, as far as movies go, uh, I always get super hype about Christopher Nolan movies. Uh, I think Brett would say the same thing right now. Uh, <laughs> but I always get really, really hyped whenever I see a Chris Nolan movie trailer. And uh, I think in terms of other media, I always get super hyped for video games. I remember one video game uh, I got really hyped for was Bioshock. I thought that was just the most insane video game trailer i've ever seen but uh yeah i've been disappointed by so many things now it's just like i don't really get hyped for (laughs) for much was there one nolan movie that you were more hyped for than the others oh i was insane about inception i saw inception probably like two or three (laughs) times in in theaters after after it had come out and i still watch it all the time that's the one about time manipulation right 
<laughs> uh, Good one. W- the one of them <laughs> about time manipulation. Yes. No, it's the Batman one. Ah. Uh, I saw Inception, or at least I dreamed I did. Michael Scott, The Office. <laughs> Mikey, follow up question. Can we still do a Snyder Cut uh, commentary? together i am so I deep in the weeds to. let's anytime i'm down we could just do that on the patreon exclusive actually let me know when i'll get some beers and we can make a night oh. of it <laughs> i was gonna say i'll have to limit my number of drinks per chapter or something like <laughs> have a strict strict limit every or time something. mother box sent us that dig a drink <laughs> Uh, so stevie I think- yeah i'll go next i'll uh, pull a brett and i'll name like three um so one of them was when i was a I think it was in the sixth grade. Do you guys remember the media campaign for um, Matrix Reloaded? Vaguely, yeah. Oh, yes. That was was everywhere. And I was so, like, so excited for that movie. And I remember during the scene of fighting a hundred Neos, how stupid (laughs) it looked on screen. (laughs) (laughs) I really... Really hated those scenes. Um, another one was uh, Django Unchained. Um, I'm a massive Quentin Tarantino fan. I'm sure people listening at home know this. And when the script leaked online, I didn't leave my room for a solid eight hours. And I just read through that thing as fast as I could. And so much was missing from that movie, but still an amazing movie. And then the last one, probably, it's actually a Christopher Nolan movie, uh, which was Interstellar. I went and saw that in IMAX with my sister. And uh, the No Time for Caution sequence is still one of my favorite sequences in all movies. So, yeah, those are my three. A couple of follow-up questions there. Did the Matrix video game come out before Matrix Reloaded? Or was it, like, simultaneous? It was before. That's... Um, I want to I want to say Enter the Matrix came <laughs> out in like February or March. I want to say Matrix Reloaded came out in April or May. It was a couple months before. Uh, second follow up question, and you you don't have to comment on this in this public forum, but you brought something to the group's attention. Um, <sighs> Bubba, another podcast. We like to have rival podcasts. We like to have friends. We like it. to have, keep our enemies closer. Stevie, what did you what did you uncover? So I mean. <sighs> What's that old adage, Pap? Like, um, what's the biggest form of flattery? Uh, imitation? Yeah. Pretty much imitation, yeah, biggest form of flattery. Well, I discovered that someone who knows me and knows <laughs> of spoilers started a podcast. And this just isn't any podcast. This is a carbon copy of what we've been doing now. <laughs> That's a, a bold accusation, Stevie. Do you have evidence to back up such yeah, a claim like I've that? Yeah, I've listened to a few episodes. A carbon copy of what we've been doing on spoilers. And what drives me mad is the fact that we've been working and working and working to get our format down to what we do. This is who we are. This is what makes us unique. And for another podcast to come in who I won't name because they don't even deserve the recognition for it. <laughs> <laughs> and to like, I mean, it just, it drives me nuts. So I'll tell you what, good luck on the pod. Um, we'll link lo- it in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, if you want more of what you can steal from, listen to this episode, I guess. Enjoy it. And this person didn't reach out to you in any way to say that they were starting a podcast or a movie podcast or a movie podcast with trivia or a movie podcast where the hosts rotate picks. Or a movie podcast, they say something before and do a cold open, and the music comes in, they do this, they do this, and also play the hijack. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, pretty <laughs> much. But that person didn't contact you beforehand, <laughs> is what you're saying. No contact whatsoever, and I would have been even flattered if they said, hey, here's what we're thinking about doing. You know, how can you help us around that? <laughs> so I'm just going to say this right now. I choose violence. I choose violence. Um, <laughs> okay, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> disavow, disavow. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna combat. say uh, good luck with the pod, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you won't make it as long as we we have so far. So Jeez. good luck. Oh one last God. one last question, Stevie. While we're on you, which one of us is the Snyder cut of this form of podcast? Is it us or is it them? <laughs> and who's the theatrical cut? No, we're neither cut. We're so no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. We, we've earned our stripes, Pap. No, no. 
We're not in those cuts. Last but not least, after an extensive opening questions to Stevie, Josh, we didn't forget about you. And will you please tell us what media you were hyped for in your past life? I won't let them forget about you, brother Jordan. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jordan, too. Thanks. Thanks, brother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is Josh from Goshen. Uh, going way back, we did a full pod about it on spoilers. Episode number 149. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 1990. I was five years old, but I was so hyped for that movie. Um, Yeah, that movie was everything. The toys are everything. So that'll always probably be my number one. More recently, and something that like I wish we could do on spoilers someday, is this podcast. It's technically a Dungeons & Dragons podcast. It's called The Adventure Zone. And I think it'd be cool if we did a spoilers that was like wrapping up a whole season arc of them that's kind of my dream to do someday but i have to talk one of you into like listening to that and that's a lot of time so anyway there's probably a lot of people that know the adventure zone the mcelroy brothers are pretty famous but um yeah maybe someday future spoilers an entire season wrapped up in one tiny hour-long spoilers episode be kind of cool do you uh do you hate me for how negative i was on the ninja turtles podcast back in the day no it gave us a great quote that we could all use on future pods like whenever we don't like something (laughs) pappy says we just have to say i just don't get this shit (laughs) i I think that was a quote from the turtles like (laughs) dismiss everything don't get it at a base level so (laughs) jordan i'm so sorry i forgot about you and your train whistle i I don't think that you we watched the original justice league together and i think you said probably something pretty we Pretty did. Slim more. Uh, where are you recording from? Almost forgot to ask that. And then, uh, what's something you were hyped for back in the day? Yeah, uh, recording from Ypsilanti, Michigan tonight. Um, I, a lot of mine have been mentioned already, I, especially Pappy, like the Harry Potter stuff, um, especially the books, the movies. I mean, it was kind of a foregone thing, but series of unfortunate events. I was also really into that um, as a, a young man. Um, Marvel, I got a bit caught up in the the hype around like infinity war and stuff i just i didn't have any uh history with the comics and so i was excited to see how it ended um and then there was also another movie in high school that i dragged stevie and mikey to uh with like a big group of people called the happening um (sighs) (laughs) it's been brought up several times (laughs) and i think that was the last uh movie that i invited more than one other person to go see uh is my last group viewing we don't go to the movies with jordan anymore um but honestly i i have a new hype train now and it's to try to find this this original ip stevie's uh nemesis pod Shouldn't be hard. It's probably like in the recommended shows, like car- <laughs> carbon copy shows. Of the I looked. Thing. It's not there. Thank God. Thanks, oh, boy. Spoilers with a Z. <laughs> just, just wait till the algorithm gets to work. <laughs> Jordan, can we look forward to a future happening spoilers pick from you? I am waiting until I win a punishment episode, and then it will go to Stevie. <laughs> oh, wow. God, oh, I need to quit giving my opinions on movies. I think these plants are killing everybody. Stevie, this was basically a punishment movie for you. We should probably get into it <laughs> at this point. Zack Snyder's Justice League. Like I said, I I have a list of more or less just discussion topics, and then we can just bounce around into the story, around the story from there. But I wanted to start off with kind of like framing it. What do you remember about sort of the origins of the Zack Snyder cut? Like I said, it was literally mythical on Twitter for a while. (laughs) On Twitter. I remember I called you because I remember you and I are not great fans of Batman v Superman. (laughs) I remember I called you the day that it said that whether it be WB fired Zack Snyder or, you know, Zack Snyder quit to go be with his family. I remember I said, wow, like what's going to happen now with this movie Because we always thought it was rushed to begin with. Movie comes out, it's not great. Then I can't give you the exact timeline, but I just remember this thing took off like wildfire. The Snyder Cut is out there. And that thing grew for years upon years upon years. And now here we are. Stoked by Zack Snyder himself sometimes, even. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't, even before on. it was a go, he was saying, you know, the Snyder cuts out there. You would, I mean, <laughs> it was pretty insane. 
pretty crazy campaign. Like a cancerous lump in your brain, it grew more and more <laughs> <laughs> from, from the mouth God of Zack damn. Snyder into the hearts of millions of douchers on Twitter. Can I speak to that too, Pappy? Please. So when people started saying release the Snyder Cut, which was hashtag. like the, yeah, the hashtag, the official phase of the demand for what we now get, the Z- Zack Snyder's Justice League, I, I want to just say to people... That movie did not exist. A hundred percent. Oh, Now yeah. people are saying, see, it existed. No, it was made. <laughs> it has been made in the interim two years or whatever, or, or more. Three, and right? cost how much more? Tons of millions on top, right? Right. I think like 25 million extra of reshoots. <laughs> 70 mil. 70 mil of reshoots? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> After Justice League wasn't even profitable for what they wanted it to be. How exactly. much of that seventy million was just Henry Cavill's mustache removal? Do we have those numbers? <laughs> <laughs> Pat, bank. I got something for you, man. Because this is Please. me, Josh from Goshen again. I'm pretty new on this this whole DC world here. You've been mm. living in it for a while. I hope I'm not stealing too many of your notes, but just like high level, what are the differences between the Snyder cut that I just? suffered through (laughs) and (laughs) the original theatrical cut of justice league can you give us like a high level breakdown or can someone chime in on that i know i know kylo has some more extensive notes there are going to be some a couple like specific points that i want to talk about like one way or another i I guess okay kylo first i would just say that like this is like more coherent or like more cohesive as a movie like when i remembering the original Justice League, it felt like two movies cobbled together. The original Justice League was very different than this one. Um, There's a lot to say on that, and we're going to go into it. But one of the things is tone, and it's a big thing, I think. That movie is tonally completely different in a way that it's trying to be a Marvel movie, I think. Uh, This movie takes itself, this one by Zack Snyder's Justice League, I mean, this one takes itself a lot more serious, and it spends a lot more time fleshing things out. But it has the time, right? Uh, This was never going to originally be a four-hour movie in theaters. That just doesn't really happen that often. Uh, So in the original, it's very condensed. So it's kind of just like, this happens. Okay, now we're doing this. Let's revive Superman. Not a lot of discussion around it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very quick for a two-hour movie in terms of like things are just happening, happening, happening. It's shocking how... Many times, like, watching that movie, I was just like, what just happened didn't make sense. Like, I don't know how they got there. I don't know how these people, like, showed up here. Now, it's less boring than this, than this movie, I would say, too. It moves a lot faster, to Kylo's point. Jordan, I know, we, like I said, we saw this movie together. Do you remember anything about that original Justice League viewing? I mean, I remember going to see it with you, and I think Kelsey was with us that day. True. And I... I and I, I was just talking to my wife about this and I told her that like, I think I forgot about half of it before we potted that night. And then I've definitely forgotten the other half since then. And there were like, <laughs> there, there were, there were parts like just nothing sticks out. It was so like, meh, there were parts that I recognized like, Oh, I th- I'm pretty sure this was in the one before. And then it would like transition into like more story where it does get more into like explaining things i think but i it's really hard for me to pick out like which bits were which uh aside from like very specific instances well one of the first things you see in the 2017 justice league is henry cavill's face and not his Mm. real face his cartoon face (laughs) and that kind of in a weird way does set the tone for the movie of how fucking stupid it is uh, the 2017 (laughs) one You see that a lot in that movie because of all the reshoots they did and everyone knows the story. He was doing Mission Impossible. He had a mustache. He wasn't allowed to shave it, etc. They didn't use any of that footage in this movie uh, to its benefit, I think. But that is definitely one of the big ones. And uh, thank God it's not in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Pappy, you, you watched both in the last few days, right? True. I've watched Justice League every night this week. I watched uh, the theatrical cut (laughs) Monday, split up the Snyder Cut Tuesday and Wednesday, and just rewatched the Snyder Cut right before this pod. And now we're going to spend four hours talking about both. Um, Yes. Which did you... Sorry, you said you watched which one first? The theatrical cut first. Okay, good. Um, 
I, I guess my other question was like, if, if COVID doesn't happen and we're all like not stuck at home and Hollywood is working like normal, does this movie get made or does this like movement kind of die out with other movies being made? I would guess no, Stevie. What, it, what would you guess? <sighs> I know Brad's probably going to roll his eyes and say, I truly disagree with you, but, um, I think this was a way for HBO Max to generate steam for their yes. uh, streaming service that is going up against Walt Disney uh, and Netflix. So Disney, who is dominating. At Disney this point, like is number one about. right now. They dethroned Netflix. So they have more subscribers? Not more subscribers, Wait, uh, officially but officially or in your no, mind? No, no, no. They're, they have in some like metric that does like the highest rated shows. Disney has been like leading basically most of 2021 already wow. right with uh okay that's why i thought because netflix yeah. still has more subscribers for than sure. anyone because of how long yeah. it's been around and they will for a long time too yeah also i think okay. disney like really infringed on like actual plays i think they might have been number one in plays but um yeah i think in a normal year uh where hbo max probably isn't a thing um i don't think the snyder cut ever goes to theaters <laughs> Yeah. I mean, especially not a four hour version, right? No, that's impossible. Yeah, that would never happen. I don't think they would even give it the time, you know what I mean? Or whatever it would require, the space on HBO Max, even. But, Kyle, I want <laughs> to go back to. I want to go back to something you said uh, earlier, just sort of like dispelling rumors. I, I, I get really frustrated at people saying that, like, this is like Zack Snyder's uninhibited vision. And like people, there's like this like camp of like hardcore like film auteurism people who are like very pro this movie because it represents kind of like a rebuking of like studio control and studio oversight. But like the actual story of this, while Zack Snyder was making Justice League, he had two producers on set at all times. Like according to this Vanity Fair article from um, February of this year, 2021, he had two producers on all times like babysitting him and constantly making him like lighten the tone of the movie. And I've seen a lot of people give like credit to the lighter tone of this movie that like, Oh, he like learned from Batman for Superman. No, that's a hundred percent. Not what happened. A producer was there making him do that. Um, and the other thing along that too, is he had like all these weird ideas. Like he wanted a romance between Batman and Lois Lane. And that was like totally next too. so like more than a romance. She was going to have his kid. <sighs> that's so fucked up. Like, but <laughs> Josh, my next note, just want to get into it more. The aesthetic is ugly and the soundtrack is bad. Your thoughts on those two? <laughs> I don't care what this Discuss. Vanity Fair article said. <laughs> this Vanity Fair article doesn't matter because the first thing you see in this movie is the most haughty, uppity text oh, I've ever read. Specifically <laughs> says that the film is presented in a 4x3 format to preserve the integrity <laughs> of Zack Snyder's creative vision. That, like, let's learn from that and never do that again. <laughs> e even if we release four-hour cuts from directors in the future. Um, I, for one, also don't mind the 4x3. I know that Stevie has a this idea that his screen is being wasted. And maybe there's some merit to that. Some? <laughs> A good <laughs> chunk. <laughs> A third. <laughs> the soundtrack is bad, Pappy, simply because like it's like WWE wrestling. Every time you see Wonder Woman, it doesn't need to be ancient lamentation <gasps> music. <laughs> like you read it on the screen and you hear the same opera. It's like, come on. Hey, like, that's pretty good. <laughs> in a four-hour movie, how, how many times did that happen? 25 times? It never got old for me. I cracked up every time it was on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Kylo, I know you want to talk about the memes of this movie. Were there any ancient lamentation music <laughs> memes that stood out to you recently? Or any other memes in general? I mean, you got to appreciate a movie that gives memes, right? I mean... Even if it's a movie you absolutely hate, if it gives you memes, it's giving you something, you know? <laughs> I appreciate that. In regards to the music, uh, I do think there was good use of Wonder Woman's theme song. I know it's kind of a joke here in this forum, but 
Uh, she's got a good theme song, and when she's doing her heroics, which kind of happened near the beginning, I quite like that. I like that whole scene, actually, as a whole. So maybe we can heroics speak on that. Heroics or brutal murder? Of <laughs> oh, yeah, many, she's killing motherfuckers in this movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's a thing that she doesn't do, so I, I have no idea. But, yeah, she's definitely <laughs> killing some terrorists, which is fun. Plus, we get Vinny from Snatch as, like, the cop who's just, like, uh, in awe of the situation. He's, um, <laughs> like, his mouth is open the whole time. Um, but I was thinking about Wonder Woman 1984 in my head because, you know, I've seen that semi-recently. And then I was seeing the Wonder Woman action scene at the beginning of this movie. And I was just thinking how superior this one is in terms of, um, like, the kinetic energy of the action scenes. In 84, there's, like, a lightweight feel to the action where there doesn't seem to be any impact behind hits. And uh, I think they handled it really well in this. I think Zack Snyder's, like, speed up to slow down thing that he loves uh, works to that scene's benefit, that that one in particular. But why does Zack Snyder always have to have such excessive property destruction in all of his <laughs> movies, though, in all of his fights? <laughs> That's a thing, right? Yeah. I mean... Zack Snyder is a concerned about the heroes, not the little people. That's evident. <laughs> Stevie, another note that I had for you, I guess if we're just getting into the movie at this point now, I, I did want to talk about their singing in Icelandic. That was one of the big early parts of the movie. <laughs> Significantly different, uh, Kyla, which I'm sure you noted. But Stevie, did you like uh, the Icelandic singing? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Heavens no. I mean... <sighs> God bless America. Um, like you brought up, Pap, the sound, like the soundtrack of this movie makes no sense, and it's really it can take you out of the movie really quick when you have like music in the background of a fight, and then seeing three seconds of Wonder Woman. But in seeing three seconds of Wonder Woman is the loud, the most loud, obnoxious screams you've ever heard in your life, and then it goes back to normal music again when she exits screen. Um, that's really hard to watch from time to time. The other thing is, too, is, no, I didn't care if that lady singing in Icelandic, even though if I was president, it would be law that either the line or text she's singing in Icelandic should be in every movie. Um, I did not care for it in this way at all. Another executive order from Stevie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dish him out. If I was president of cinema, things would be much different. But, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I just, I feel like... I told us to you before, I feel like in this movie, Zack Snyder arrives early to every scene and leaves late. And her scene in Icelandic is leaving, you know, 30 minutes late and everybody's ready to go to bed. Like, it's just, it, it's, yeah, no, I did not care for that. I feel like I was trying to be kind of like the Lord of the Rings extended, you know, with um, <laughs> the funeral Aowen singing. <laughs> I got she a does, little bit of vibes of that. She does this weird thing, though, where she, like, sniffs Aquaman's sweater that he just left yeah. there. Like an extended, deep sniff, and then, like, belts out the solo. It makes it feel like Aquaman comes up to shore to, like, bang a bunch of groupies and then <laughs> takes, off, takes his sweater off and jumps back into the ocean. Got, like, a midsummer sort of vibe to it. <laughs> I got that vibe, too, Mikey. Yeah. Jordan, speaking of groupies, I feel terrible for Amy Adams in this movie because I feel like she has nothing to do but like feel sad that her boyfriend died. How do you feel about the character Lois Lane? Uh, she's she's the the key, right? <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> what, the Jar Jar. That's what they're oh, the key to all of this. Did that did that storyline ever get uh drilled down? Like, what the fuck is that about? The Jar Jar storyline. Her like Batman says that she is the key or something, but she she just like hugs just Superman and makes him Superman feel better. Down. Yeah, I think that was it. Oh, okay, that's what she was supposed to do. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> the setup Whatever. for the whole like having his yeah, baby apocalypse. You know, because uh, she's the uh, okay, okay. We'll she's the vaporized corpse in Batman's hands. Uh, in the Flash <laughs> forward or yes, dream or whatever. I don't know what you want to call it. Alternate timeline? Yes. Uh, Pappy, to answer your question, Amy Adams' talents are poorly used in the Snyder Cut, <laughs> I would say. 
more like Amy Saddams. She <laughs> walks. She walks through a cornfield. <laughs> That was Christopher Nolan's contribution. They are the most boring parts of the movie. One in particular is just like looking at her face and the camera doesn't even move at all for like 90 seconds. And she, I think she's looking at some statue that's broken, but it's just so boring and dreary at that point. Not only that, Stevie, you and I were texting back and forth a little bit about this movie. I think I probably like mischaracterized it though because I was like really pissed and I was like, whatever songs... Zack Snyder had on his iPod, but I don't, I don't think that's really what it is. I think Zack Snyder meticulously combs through top forty or indie his iPod. charts to try and find exact words that match what's happening on the screen. Did that bother you too? I mean, like if you thought the uh, Superman, you know, Jesus behind Superman was bad, this is worse. Um, first off, it's Leonard Cohen singing, which is it Leonard? I mean, it sounds like Leonard Cohen. I don't know if exactly is, but I literally wanted to fast forward the movie. Um, every time I heard that he, he or they lied, he lied, it lined, belted out. Um, very on the nose with every song choice throughout this entire movie. Um, especially with, you know, they said God's would live forever song. That was, um, yeah, that, that didn't need to be in this movie. Or even that song. Amy Adams could have been in silence, and it probably would have worked better. Let us go now, my darling There's a um, song of the siren when Aquaman is like saving the guy on the boat. I think mm -hmm. that's the part. And it's talking about like, I float on this ocean and he's like on the boat on the ocean. <laughs> yeah, there is definitely that. And then when Aquaman jumps into the water, it's like every king has his kingdom. That's right before him and Defoe have that like controversy about him wanting to be king or not. Um, I got another one, another favorite, if that's Please. okay. Yeah, the the credits roll, and it's Hallelujah, um, <laughs> a version I've never heard, and it's like, wow, finally this movie's over, Hallelujah, and that fits, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Uh, Kylo, th there's a couple of changes that I wanted to talk about, but there's one in particular that's really kind of like makes me mad about what Josh Whedon changed and Joss Whedon has apparently been semi canceled does anybody know about like what happened there um apparently one of the things was on like Buffy he like wasn't allowed to be in a room alone with this girl and uh I, they don't they very don't, normal they didn't say exactly what that means but that implies a lot um there's a couple other small things it, it's semi vague you know he called like a pregnant woman fat or something. Wasn't that like one of the things that he was <laughs> I didn't like? Hear anything like like that? I think he was no. an, an asshole, but mostly to females. So there's like a specific line, Kylo. I don't know if you remember this, but in the Snyder cut, Aquaman says, "Have you ever heard this saying? The strongest man is strongest alone." And Batman, and it's a very sincere line. And Batman's like, but no, you got to fight with me because of Superman. The fight comes, we'll need you. Don't count on it, Batman. Why not? It's not like you coming here, digging into my business, getting into my life. I want to be left alone. Is that way you do this? Way you help these people out here in the middle of nowhere? I've read the stories, your good deeds, you think no one sees? You'll join us. Strong man as strong as alone. You ever heard that? You ever hear of Superman? He died fighting next to me. My point exactly. In the Joss Whedon version, he says the same thing. The strongest, strong man, strongest alone. And Batman's like, what the F are you talking about? Like, that's not, that's not the thing. Like, he totally like makes fun of the words that Zack Snyder wrote there. We can play the clip. The fight comes, we'll need you. Don't count on it, Batman. Why not? It's not like you coming here, digging into my business, getting into my life. People from Atlanta tell me to do this. Now you say do that. I want to be left alone. That way you help these people out here in the middle of nowhere because you can just leave. 
I help him because no one else does. You want to protect them, you need to work with me. Strong man as strong as alone. You ever heard that? That's not a saying. That's the opposite of what the saying is. Yeah. This doesn't mean I'm wrong. You ever hear of Superman? He died fighting next to me. My point exactly. I guess, Kyle, do you remember that at all? That scene? I do remember that. I remember that being a good example of the weed and humor that's inserted throughout the theatrical cut. I mean, it's mm-hmm. everywhere. There's a lot of jokes like that. I didn't know. I didn't even think if that was like a jab at Snyder necessarily. I mean, it's like it, making fun of his words. You know what I mean? It's like, that's not the saying. Like, that's stupid. He's something. like, that's not a thing. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, we we haven't talked about this yet, but like one of the things that happened with Zack Snyder is he had a tragedy in his family, lost a child. That's part of the reason why he couldn't work on the set. Like for for them to, for, I understand that like changes had to be made, but for them to like mock his script feels pretty gross to me. Josh, you probably didn't know anything about that. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to explain? Like what, what happened there? Yeah, that makes sense, but... I'm mostly paying attention to this like nanotechnology armor that the Steppenwolf, pretty cool <laughs> band from the '60s, by the way. Um, yeah, he's got like this nano, ride. got this nanotechnology armor. Um, no, uh, it's weird hearing you s- describe all that, and that makes sense. But coming super fresh into this, like, I guess like I didn't know what I was missing, so I didn't miss that. And I definitely didn't miss any humor. I didn't. There's a little bit in this movie, but uh, it's that's. Is that a complaint from you, Stevie? That this movie takes itself too seriously? Um, I really don't care that it takes itself really seriously. I mean, if that's the tone that Zack Snyder wants to go to, that's fine. And also, good on him to be able to make the movie that he initially wanted. Um, just a lot of, I mean, a lot of it stems from, I feel like a lot of everything that happens in this movie is somewhat unearned. Um, especially the fact Mm -hmm. that, you know, we never got a cyborg movie, never got a flash movie. Um, and I feel like, you know, these epic moments throughout this film aren't earned because we really don't have much history with these characters. Yes. You know, it's good for Zack Snyder to bring these guys more to the screen than, jo- you know, Joss Whedon did, but still, it doesn't work for me. That's where you're wrong, Stevie. There is a Cyborg movie, and there is a Flash movie in this movie. <laughs> they probably get 45 <laughs> minutes of just bullshitting around, uh, which grinds the movie to a halt, and I think is... I know it adds a bunch of context, especially for Cyborg, because you can, like, launch fucking nuclear warheads or something uh, a fucking 18 year old now has that power uh which we learn to find out isn't the most morally uh he isn't the the greatest uh example of moral justice or whatever <laughs> he's got <laughs> he's like cheating for his friends or whatever in college it's hell of a football player though Man. yeah and now he can just launch nukes with his fucking brain so uh <laughs> yeah we get the whole the whole cyborg and flash movie in this movie i fucking hate it <laughs> i want to say that i think it's amazing that they cast joe morton as cyborg's father silas stone uh I can just imagine like the casting session when they're like, all right, who should we get to play the scientist that creates this highly sophisticated cybernetic being? Hmm. What's the guy from T2 Dyson? Right. Doing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it is so perfect. Do you, uh, St- Stevie, I, we talked about this too. I keep going back to you, but do you like that? It's, uh, very similar to the the commercial. Was it an Under Armour commercial that you put in the thread? That was a very famous <laughs> like, Super Bowl commercial. Like it, it felt the exact same. <laughs> okay, so I don't know Zack Snyder at all. I don't know anything about his background, but I don't think he's watched a ton of football in his entire life. Um, I he, honestly, he is a big football fan. Is he? Yeah, he's from Green Bay, I think. That is oh, okay. It's somewhat shocking then. That makes sense that they're playing Wisconsin. Like, they're actually Wisconsin Badgers with, like, Badges. branded helmets and stuff. <laughs> Sorry, Stevie. I just, I mean, maybe it didn't mean a whole lot to him to, like, shoot actual football scenes. But everything was in slow motion. 
I mean, everything was in slow motion. And what made that Nike commercial great with Steven Jackson and uh, Sean Merriman was there was slow motion in it, but it was also frantic and extremely kinetic, and they would speed it up from time to time. So it would look incredibly fluid. Like the slow motion and the fastness would balance each other out. But there was none of that in the football scenes. It was all slow-mo. That could have been a two-minute sequence uh, if it was just a normal speed. And for all of you sports heads out there, there are 11 men on defense. Uh, <laughs> and he ends up breaking 15 tackles uh, to get <laughs> into the end zone. <laughs> Gotham City College. Uh, speaking of oh, origin yeah. stories, Josh, or, or sorry, Jordan, did you like the cyborg or, origin story? Speaking of slow motion origin stories, his whole dog walking sequence. You mean Flash? Flash, yeah, sorry. Who did I say? Cyborg? Yeah. I, Flash, I mean, I, yeah. I, I guess it's okay. It's just, uh, like Mikey said, it's so tough to like care about these people when it's like, hey, let's stuff five origin stories into the first, I mean... It's two hours, so I I guess it's a long time. It's worth enough. Like you've got enough uh, material there for an actual origin story, but like you, it just doesn't like you don't get the trials and tribulations, and so it's so hard to like care. Honestly, I barely remember the fucking dog walking, whatever that was. <laughs> okay, well, I remember it was so long ago about it that I, I have to like it. Kylo. I don't know if I. This is probably like one of my least least favorite parts, like part that I like actually. But Kylo, you you remember it. Yeah, well, I mean, Barry saves someone from this big car wreck, and goddamn, this truck driver is fishing around for his fucking oh, the cheese big Mac. that he yeah. dropped for mm. ten minutes. Big like, cheese. <laughs> he <laughs> is underneath like, the gas pedal. He's still gonna eat it. It just <laughs> fell underneath the gas pedal of his truck. <laughs> this isn't the guy that sweeps his floor very often either. I think this scene doesn't exist without X Men: Days of Future Past. You know. It's uh, mm, yes. It yes, seems yes, to be yes. like their version of the uh, the fast guys like big scene, you know, by himself. I think it's pretty good, honestly, like in execution. But I was annoyed by that burger guy, and I was thinking about another movie that does a similar scene, which to me is not necessarily a great thing. But did you like the wieners floating around his head, and he grabs one? <laughs> I was thinking, is he going to do something with those? And he does, so it has that. <laughs> I found it hilarious that instead of, like, after saving the girl and then, like, getting people out of the way of that, that car that's going to explode, he's just, like, letting it just crash into, a, like, a hot dog cart and destroy everything <laughs> down the street, just not even caring. One huge question that I had throughout the movie was, for The Flash in particular... Like, what are the limits of his power? It's kind of like OP. They can slow down time that slow and possibly reverse time. But I wish there would have been some sort of time limit on it. Or, like, the best you get is that if he trips or someone takes a pot shot at him, he might, like, trip up, like, literally stub his toe and stop flashing. But, I don't know, Corey, in the comics, is there some sort of, like, limit to his I, I don't know you do you know what i mean like how far yeah. can this go yeah i don't know for sure because i'm not that much of a dc reader but the vibe i got from watching this movie is that if he's hurt if he loses concentration because he's you know in pain or if he's just like knocked on his ass then he loses the ability to do it i don't think it's like quicksilver where he, if he's running that's like everything slow for him i think he you know Initial initializes or whatever the fuck his lightning shit, and then that makes things <laughs> slow around him. I know that wasn't very eloquent, but that's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> Lightningy. <laughs> what, it's, I, I, it has a name. His power. I forget what it is. It's called like the Flash something. The thing that really bothers me about like this group, I, and I, again, I'm not in. I'm not a superhero guy. People who have listened to the podcast for a while probably know that, but this collection of heroes. A lot of their powers feel kind of overlapping. You know what I mean? Like, how many of them have super speed? Uh, three, at least. Batman mm. has no powers. And, like, <laughs> yeah. no, he's rich. Yeah, yeah, he's rich. And then followed by a sweet car montage. Zack <laughs> Snyder, <laughs> slow, yeah, slow motion. But I don't, like, 
I feel like in the like the Incredibles, for example, which they're starting from scratch, they can do whatever they want, or even something like X Men. I feel like there's more of a individuality coming together as a team to the fights. You know what I mean? Like I can do this, and this enables me to do this, and you can do this. Like maybe would have we would have seen more of that later, but like the only times they're interacting are when the Flash is like knocking over Aquaman, or they're all just punching as hard as they can. You know what I mean? Right. Like, is, is there like a good choreography moment I'm missing here, Kyla? Well, I got one. Oh, please. There's a place where they all have to jump a bridge, almost like in Star Wars. <laughs> That's the stupidest shit, though. <laughs> and, but that is a good example, right? Because Batman <sighs> uses his like bat hook. The Flash flashes over. Wonder Woman can jump it. It's an example of that, but we're talking about a goddamn superhero movie, not just any superhero movie, Justice League, which should be one of the biggest superhero movies ever. They're <laughs> jumping over right. a gap. Like, I think I can quantify your problem, Pappy, to a very specific thing, and that's that Wonder Woman and Aquaman, in the context of this movie, basically have the same power set. Yes. Mm-hmm. They're basically exactly the same. They're very strong. The same they level. Can leap bounds. They're pretty fast. You know, Aquaman's not doing a lot with water in this. He's not summoning a giant seahorse. Uh, Wonder Woman isn't doing whatever the fuck her thing is. She's not using her lasso that much. So, yeah, they, they come off very similar. And there's only six heroes, so that's a pretty big overlap. Well, there's the one scene where Superman comes back, and there's, like, a a part in that where they're all just pushing each other. Like, uh, <laughs> the cyborg guy and... Uh, Aquaman and Wonder Woman are all just pushing Superman until he has to like stop and beat uh, like he stops the Flash and he beats their asses. But like they're just pushing. It's they're just strong and fast. That's all it is. Stevie is Superman way too fucking OP to just be a good character. <laughs> <sighs> Always was. Yep. Astronaut meme. I mean, like you kind of said, Pap, like the overlapping is really insane in this movie because it leads to literally everyone doing the same thing. I mean, it's one thing to be in slow motion, like for 80% of this movie, and it came out to like 24 minutes runtime <laughs> out of this four hour movies in slow motion. <laughs> but it's like every single character has super speed and slow motion. And so. It's like we brought that Matrix video game earlier. Yeah, it's really cool to get to do slow motion like in the first two levels. By like, by like level 12, you're just like maxed out. Mm-hmm. Like there, there's, it's like almost boring at it com- coming to a certain point. And so Superman not really showing up to like the two and a half hour mark. It's like, okay, maybe he'll bring something different. No, just more super speed and super strength. And I, I don't know. I guess like it just kind of, for me, it devalues whatever the flash can do if the Superman's yes. basically as fast. I, I guess we see later mm-hmm. that flash can push it harder, but in this fight, it's just kind of like annoying. I, and Steve, you're talking about characters coming up late. We're pretty far in the pod and we haven't even talked about dark side yet. Mikey, can you tell us a little <laughs> bit about what apparently this movie was trying to set up the big picture? Uh, w- Okay, Darkseid is totally new to the Snyder Cut. Wasn't at all in the original Justice League. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, Darkseid is basically (laughs) just jumping into Thanos Infinity War uh, from in the third movie of these, what was it going to be, five movies? Uh, So it's like we don't have any buildup for him. He's just like in this movie. We find out Steppenwolf. Uh, is like a servant, uh, not a servant. He's like exiled, I guess, to Darks, Darksea, Darkside. Um, and he has to like conquer a shit ton of worlds to like get back in his good graces. And I guess for some reason they find out, I don't know, man. It's just like <laughs> the whole thing, the whole thing with the mother boxes is like stupid. It's so stupid. <laughs> uh, they're basically infinity stones and they're here on earth and we Steppenwolf finds them or like, and he can just like apparate right next to all of them. So it's like, what good is even trying to protect these things? And I don't know. Just, I know those get, two franchises have a long history of copying off each other. Yeah. That's what I was going to say, but there's a lot more in this movie. Like, I think the whole vibe with Aquaman drinking steals pretty directly from 
Infinity War Endgame too, right? Or which came first, I guess I should say. Well, Endgame would have come second, but um, Thor does drink a lot, to your point. He's kind of the Thor-like character, if you're going to pencil him in there. There's more, like, (laughs) and yeah, Batman's like the rich Iron Man, but Cyborg actually has, like, the suit. I got a bunch of boring notes on that, but... Yeah. I mean, with the source material having so many similarities as it is, and the, the two big companies having copied each other on various things for so long. Mostly, I think, Marvel copying DC, to be honest. But with all that happening, like I think the execution of Zack Snyder's Justice League is as different as it can be, considering which characters they decided to go with. But that's part and parcel to... They didn't pick those characters in a vacuum of the MCU existing, though, Kylo. Like... No, they pick the DC characters that people know. <laughs> <laughs> Who just true. so happen to conform to the exact same franchise, which is huge right now. Speaking of stealing characters, did you guys think that anytime Steppenwolf talked for more than like two seconds, he was just like Satan from South Park? <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> 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 That's good. <laughs> yeah, there's so much room. <laughs> uh, I mean, he looks more like the legend Satan guy. Tim Curry. Hey, you leave Tim Curry out of this. <laughs> I mean, he's got the big horns. This movie could have used a horny Saddam character, too, <laughs> trying to hump him. <laughs> Here's yeah, come on, Satan. Come on, Steppenwolf. <laughs> I can change. I can change. Uh, Kylo, but moreover, I just don't like. I don't, could this movie have ever worked given the the crunch of the timeline? Because I, I true, maybe even these characters came first before Thanos. I don't. I don't know. But I, I think it's just more of they wanted to have their Avengers, but in an expedited timeline. You know what I mean? I think that was like kind of what undercut yeah. everything about this whole DCEU experiment or whatever it was. That was always its problem. And that was always its failure back to the days of Batman V Superman. You know, do you remember how wonder woman was introduced to these movies? She just showed up in that movie. Wah, 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 Nothing. Wah, wah, wah. Just showed <laughs> up. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of like one of my biggest problems is like, you almost sort of need some of the context from the original Justice League because this is the sequel to the Batman versus Superman movie, which has now, when did that come out? Like 2016, 2015? It's like, I don't remember shit from that at all. Like, that, I don't know what happens in that movie at all. And now we're jumping into Zack Snyder's Justice League. And we need all the context of that movie where Superman died. I don't remember how that happens. Like, and now we're just jumping into like these infinity mother box things. Was that even a thing in Batman versus Superman? No, nope. Came in in Justice League. Was that beginning jarring for you then, Mikey? Like absolutely. That- I was like, what yeah, the fuck is for me that? too. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely a movie for the fans. I'll say that. I mean, the theatrical version introduces the mother boxes in a, a way worse way, right, Pappy? I don't remember it, how, but yeah, for sure. The theatrical version opens with Batman. Oh yeah, <laughs> luring out some parademons because he's mm-hmm. trying to like investigate yeah. what these demons are flying around Gotham, dangling this like cat burglar over the ledge, and there just happens to be a parademon right there chilling. Oh or yeah, yeah, fucking mine hunter dude. Yeah, and uh, he kills the parademon. The parademon leaves square blood stains on the wall, like three squares, and he's like, "I gotta investigate this," and like. That's the connection to the mother boxes at the beginning of the theatrical version. It's just like the the demon's gore stain on the wall <laughs> that is shaped in squares. There's just like context that you need from Batman versus Superman. Like there's a scene in Snyder Cut where Batman is talking to Wonder Woman at like a desk or something and he's like I just had a fucked up dream. And you're like, okay, did I miss that scene? What dream is he talking about? <laughs> he's talking about a dream that took place in Batman versus Superman. <laughs> That's like Mikey. What? The fu- what? <laughs> I love you so much because that specifically was the scene where Ben Affleck. It just totally broke down my any sort of like disbelief I had in the movie. I was just looking at Ben Affleck delivering these lines. <laughs> like, yeah, that, this is the Ben Affleck that's not going to put on a Yankee hat 
just having to <laughs> read man. these lines with a dead look in his <laughs> eye, like this is shit right now. Mr. Fashionable Male himself. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Duncan, 2016 oh, to 2021. <laughs> uh, Jordan, speaking of things that are significantly different, not that that's what you have to focus on necessarily, but do you like the reanimation of Superman in the Snyder Cut? Like I said, very different in a lot of ways. Uh, I mean, I don't remember the original way. I it just it's it seems cheap. I had to look up on YouTube how he actually died in the first place. Like you kind of see it in the intro, but I like wanted some more detail. Um, I didn't actually need to look it up because it doesn't matter. Uh, it's just like it. I I you know we covered it. Like he, he's OP. They brought him back. I mean, not easily, I guess, but it just seems like such a a cop out to bring back strongest character in all the movies and he just beats ass after that um i i don't know i i find myself being more interested in like the flash and cyborg and their backstories even as terribly fleshed out as they were than like superman in this movie because he's just he's too powerful can we get deep into that like what are the consequences for superman coming back from the dead like there seemed to be zero except for his like memory needs to like reboot for a little bit. I think that's a little cheap. <laughs> no one's ever really gone, including Superman's muscle mass after being dead for many days. <laughs> he was just in sleep mode for a while. <laughs> what do you mean, Josh? You know, like I think Game of Thrones, for all the shit I give it, like if they have a character coming back from the dead, that's like a big deal and George R. R. Martin writes it so they like lose a piece of themselves. And maybe the first time they come back from the dead it's just a little bit. But it's like part of the story that you can't come back from the from the dead for free. And I just feel like, you know, no one died to make it happen. And Superman like literally does suffer no consequences for having died. Wow, that's a really good point. I feel like Wonder Woman and Aquaman say something like, say something about that. Like, you can't just resurrect this guy and not expect there to be mm-hmm. consequences or something. And we end up having no consequences? No consequences. Yeah. It's that scene <laughs> where Cyborg and Flash are digging up Superman's grave, which is still still weird in this. Like, in, in the theatrical cut, it's like, super comedic while they're like exhuming his body which just has a really kind of like greasy feel to it but in this there's like at least like we could do this fast but we're gonna do it slow but we're also gonna talk about how hot wonder woman is while we do it so there's no absolute Yo. reverence to what we're doing <laughs> uh but but yeah they, they say something to the effect of like they both have the same saying in their cultures like one cannot be brought back from brought back from the darkness without a cost or something and i'm just like how often could you possibly fucking say that saying? You know what I mean? How can that be like a common <laughs> saying in both of your cultures? But well, it has to work. Steve- two, it has to work two ways. If you're gonna if you're gonna dangle out a rule like that, it, it can't just work one way. Which I understand what Zack Snyder is doing. He's kind of doing a thing where that's probably what the sequel would have been about when like that's, the Earth, yeah. Earth is on say, fire. If I was an apologist fan. That sure. would be what yeah, I would say. But like. <sighs> In movies, there are rules, and this is a movie, even though it doesn't play like one. It has to work on two <laughs> levels. It has to work. It has to work on the immediate, and it has to work on the future. It has to work on the future, and just playing it as like, oh, this is what they were talking about in the future doesn't work. I know you're going to agree with me, Stevie. He should have come back for three days. He should have had three <sighs> days. Oh, oh boy, three days. three days in a cave. Three days in a cave. <laughs> I would have been so happy with that. We're getting close to Holy Week here, people. As Let's we go. Record this. So, I mean, is that is, is there even like no discussion here? Superman, Queer as Day, Christ-like character of this film. <laughs> I mean, he's floating in space on an invisible crucifix, so I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> he sure is, isn't he? Yeah, he had to put that in, you know. Like, just yeah, couldn't not have that part. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking Zack Snyder. The last chapter real- is called something darker, and I thought that was going to be a reference to Superman being like different or fucked up somehow. But no, you're, like you guys are totally right. He's the exact same dude. Jordan, he's wearing a black suit. <laughs> oh, I missed it. I missed it. A darker Subtext. suit. <laughs> one one of the things that drives me absolutely fucking crazy about the reanimation scene too is like 
I don't know if you guys remember that famous D and D interview around like season eight of Game of Thrones, where like Danny just kind of forgets about the Iron <laughs> Fleet, and like that got <laughs> memed around. It's like everyone just kind of forgets about the mother box for a really long time. And it's like, how did no one like think about the most important weapon, the, the, the deus or the, the MacGuffin of the whole fucking movie <laughs> so far? Everyone kind of forgot about it. But Stevie, big difference that we talked about, and Kyle, feel free to like jump on here too because you, you might remember as well, but there's a whole like Russian family conduit into Good Stephen God. Wolf's headquarters in the theatrical yeah. cut. Do, do you remember any of that? I know it's been a while for you. I thought that was... I mean, in the Joss Whedon cut, I hate to call it that, or just the original Justice League, for crying out loud. Um, JW's JL. Yeah, it seemed to kind of... It seemed kind of like a shoehorned like way to get the team to work together to a certain point. It's so stupid. Yeah, it's it wasn't great. I remember that, and that's pretty much nowhere to be found in this cut at all. Kylo, is the movie better for it, in your estimation? It's better for not having it, because it's awful in <laughs> the theatrical version. And I think it speaks to like the success of The Avengers, which Joss Whedon did direct, which a lot of the movie... At the in the final act was not only the Avengers fighting the bad guys, but saving the people. Right? They're doing a lot of that in New York, especially Captain America. It's a big component of it. That kind of thing doesn't really exist in Zack Snyder superhero movies. So it was clearly added. Um, but it's weird. And it's it's weirdly inserted yes, in the theatrical that, version. That's what I was gonna say. They cut to it so often, but like at very like spread out times in the movie. Yes. It's so strangely incorporated. Yeah. The timeline that they're experiencing, the civilians, don't doesn't match the timeline of the rest of the movie. And it's just yeah, and it's it feels it's one of those scenes that when you're watching it, it like feels tacked on. Like you can tell that oh it was not a part of the original or original cut or whatever you'd say at all. But I actually had a question for you guys, because I want to try to extract some positivity. <laughs> um, no, I want to see like what things you guys liked in this above Joss Whedon, like th just a particular scene, a moment, a beat, an action scene. Like what thing was for you was like this is way better than the original. This rocks. That sucks. I'll go first. I mean, it just makes more sense. Like it's. I would say it's. I think it's significantly better than the original cut, just because every character seems to be more flushed out now it's to the detriment of having to sit there for four fucking hours to flush everybody out but like things just don't happen randomly which is good mm. so you just mean like the overall vibe of it just just the vibe of the thing yeah. i listen yeah. to the castle podcast <laughs> it's, the by vibe. The way. <laughs> it's just you know the vibe of it <laughs> um i was gonna be sarcastic and say amber heard's psychotic accent um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> whatever Amber in the turned. hell that was. Volker told me you would come. The firstborn of beloved Queen Atlanta. Wait. Please. Um, I did like the scene where Batman was driving through like the city with the Batmobile and there was parademons flying all around him quite a bit uh i like that much more than what we did in um the theatrical cut and the same with um mainly aquaman's kind of overall movement and attitude throughout those fights and him like sliding i mean it looks similar of him like sliding out of the building but i did appreciate the color schemes a lot more in this one his like legolas moments like where he, yeah he's like surfing <laughs> on an orc drink or whatever yeah i mean i know that Aquaman kind of plays like Maui and Thor mixes one, but I really like that. Josh, did you have anything? He uh, didn't watch the original, though. Yeah. This is his first experience. Lucky bastard. <laughs> well, Mikey? Uh, I'll agree with Pap. You know, you know the fucking vibes. Uh, <laughs> the vibe of the thing. <laughs> the vibe I, of the whole thing. Yeah, it's, it's the whole vibe. It's, it's the thing. The thing is, he's right. It's 
you do get more context, but it is at the expense of me sitting in front of a fucking monitor for four hours. <laughs> um, and it's just my number. I, there is absolutely no way I would ever watch this in a movie theater with like the fucking one intermission that Zack Snyder allows halfway through the movie. <laughs> uh, I would have lost my mind, but it, it's, uh, it's, I want to say I like the design of Steppenwolf a lot more. I like the mm-hmm. si- shiny mechanical suit thing, uh, and mm-hmm. it does like cool stuff like snapping the arrows and stuff. I think he looks better. That does work better than I thought it would. Yeah. Yeah. It looked goofy in like the promo pictures or whatever, but I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, it's uh, it's just too much. It's It should... There's like three movies in here, and it's way too much, and we're like... We're on Infinity War in the third movie right here. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Too soon. It's, yeah. Just no context for half of the Justice League, and we're fighting Thanos right now. The original Steppenwolf design, because I've, I've watched them both recently, is way the fuck worse yes. than the Zack Snyder's Justice League version. And he he like just feels different. Like he, I think he might be shorter in that one. His voice is different. His his overall presence is like uh, vastly superior mm-hmm. in the Zack Snyder version. That's what I don't fucking understand. Is like presumably Josh Joss's marching orders. I fucking hate his stupid name. Joss is such a is stupid. It Joss name. or Josh? <laughs> I wa- I keep wanting to say Josh <laughs> because I. You Josh- said it equal times in this pod. <laughs> Josh Whedon, who we're all talking about, like presumably his marching orders were make it funnier. And shorter, which a lot of like, if you like look at the delta between the two, you can say, okay, that's why this decision was made. That's why this decision was made. I don't know, like, why change Stefan Wolf, Kylo? Like, that, that's a weird fucking choice. I have a feeling that the change was for the, uh, the Snyder cut. I think Snyder had the oh. benefit of seeing what didn't work in the original, and he made some corrections. I highly doubt the movie we got was the original intended Zack Snyder's Justice League. I think that's a really good point because I that's the main thing I remember from seeing the original Justice League was that like Steppenwolf was a terrible villain and like I a lot of these movies have a a villain issue or a villain problem but like he was laughable and in this one he like Mikey said he looks cool um he actually is formidable uh it it's a big difference. I feel like you guys are forgetting that this film was presented in 4x3 to preserve oh boy. <laughs> the integrity of Zack Snyder's creative vision. Yeah, You're only preserving. Josh, you're a tech guy. What's the reason? That it's 4x3? I to mean, preserve. That's it. Preserve? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's the vibe of the whole thing. <laughs> it's just the vibe. <laughs> so what I heard, and I don't fully understand this, is that it's because... This is the IMAX film aspect ratio, and he wanted it to be in the IMAX film aspect ratio, but this is an HBO Max release, right? I'm not going to see this at an IMAX theater. So that's the part I don't get. Like, I was hoping someone might know why one would want to have a movie in the IMAX aspect ratio that's not going to be in an IMAX theater. Um, pretentiousness. I think it's greed, honestly. <laughs> why that? Why greed, Stevie? I think it was a pure gamble that movie theaters would be, you know, high flowing and going 100 percent by the time this was released. And they just made up that complete horseshit of we were going to keep, you know, the original intention of what the director wanted. No, they wanted IMAX's full go at this point. Mm. It's it's pure greed. Anybody who says anything different is just selling you something. Do you guys think that maybe it's to look like comic book panels? No, like more it's read. No way. <laughs> Do not give them that no. credit, Josh. Yeah, I, 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 it's, it was, it, I could not imagine this being like any kind of uh, artistic choice, right? This is a choice made out of necessity for sure. And if it's something with IMAX, like shooting for I mean, that makes a hundred percent sense to me. I don't know why you would choose to do it like this. Just like, I don't know why you would choose to have 50 fucking endings on this. movie. <laughs> Josh, did you have a favorite ending of the bunch? <laughs> uh, so this is, like I said a million times already in this pod, my first dip into DC. And I just found the whole thing with the Joker at the end. So out of nowhere and hilarious. <laughs> Um, I read this, there's a tweet recently, but it's like playing Joker is like 
today's Hamlet for actors. So you just see, you just get Jared Leto just completely overacting this part. And um, I don't know. That's probably my favorite. Um, do you think this has more endings than Return of the King, which we'll get to eventually? Mm, I feel like Return of the King has more. Honestly, yeah, me too. Yeah, I th- undisputed I do champ, too. right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, Josh. You did you not have a favorite though? Did not, or you said the Joker one stuck out to you? The yeah, most? for sure. I think it's like a Batman dream. Which, when I'm watching that, I was like, the first place my brain went was like, that motherfucker is so cynical. He's setting up alternate timelines in this movie because everything about that <laughs> feels like tacked on too. Like I thought he was literally trying to like set up a timeline where he could keep making DC movies for himself, yeah. basically. Yes. Um, is that is that not the point of it, though? Isn't that Was that not supposed to be the setup for the next movie? It has where, to be, right? It must be. Where uh, Lois Lane is dead and Superman just loses his shit and Darkseid, Darkseid somehow takes control of Superman? Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously. But they're not doing it. I mean, like, that's what I don't understand (laughs) is like, why even have that if these movies aren't going to be made anymore? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, You're saying definitely that was like going to be a real alternate universe to some extent? That's supposed to be the sequel. That's supposed to be the movie. That's supposed to be part two. How? Wait, what? But it was a dream. Or the dream was added on to. He says it's more like a premonition. That's supposed to be when Darkseed. Because at the end of this movie, Darkseed is on his way to Earth to fuck everything up. And some in that timeline or in that movie, the next movie, he would eventually kill Lois Lane or something somehow. Superman loses his shit and then he is now destroying Earth and it's Batman versus Superman again. <laughs> I'll, uh, I promise in my yes or no, I'll come back and say some nice things about Zack Snyder. But Ky- Kylo... On the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull podcast uh, we did on Big Dumb Movie with uh, Film Dylan from Cine Study, we talked about how it's just very embarrassing when you set up for something like Shia LaBeouf being the next Indiana Jones and then everyone knows it's just not going to happen. And then every time you watch that movie, it's just kind of like tainted by that embarrassment and shame that you feel for everyone involved in the project. Like. Why doesn't Zack Snyder have any dignity and just edit the shit out and just give it like a good, clean ending? Okay. There is no reason Martian Manhunter needs to be in this movie. <laughs> no reason. And why isn't he helping? Why did he turn into fucking mock Kent and talk to Lois and say like, man, you should get back to work being a reporter? Why did he do that? Because she's going to crack the dark side story. The world needs her. <laughs> She's going to write an article about Dark Side? <laughs> like, <what>? Yeah. <laughs> Change the world. <laughs> yeah, that that is something that definitely doesn't work for me. And I think I'm way more positive on this movie than anyone else here. But the Martian Manhunter stuff? Nah, man. I've seen it. It's at the end of uh, every fucking early Avengers movie. You know, Iron Man, the Hulk. I'm forming a team. <laughs> And and what the fuck was this asshole doing when they were fighting Steppenwolf? Man, like they were getting their asses kicked for a while there. You son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that can even happen in that conversation. Like Martian Manhunter's just like, I'm in. And Batman's like, good to have you. And Martian Manhunter says, see you later. And Batman goes, bye. <laughs> and that's the <laughs> end of the conversation. It's so stupid. Just muttering, going back to my donkeys. <laughs> uh, any, okay, there's a lot. I'm going to scan through my notes and try and bring up any of my final thoughts. But anything that we didn't talk about that you guys want to talk about? Okay, maybe I'm missing something or film Twitter has just passed me by. Um, <laughs> why... Maybe I'm the only one that didn't think it was the greatest thing that's ever happened to cinema, quote unquote. But why is that Flash scene where he like hits time travel so amazing to everybody and not myself? Which one? The one at the end? The one at the end where he's like speaking about how he's going to be a good boy from now on and yada yada. I just, I mean, maybe (laughs) I didn't think it was that great. Like his quotes basically like he says, dad... Whatever happens, I just want you to know, I was awesome. I was one of the best of the best. Like, those are your last words to your father, not, 
you were a good dad or I know you didn't do it or I still love you or you were never a burden on my life. He goes, dad, I want you to know your son was one of the best of the best. <laughs> so stupid. I was a number one contender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been me. Did he do it though? Do what? Did his dad kill his mom? <laughs> No. <laughs> and, and that's the Just thing wondering. Is, there's going to be a Flash movie, isn't there? There is. and uh, With Ezra Miller. In similar fashion, they're diving right into the biggest Flash comic story there is. Not building up to it. They're just doing Flashpoint. Like, that's the first one they're doing. <laughs> God, <laughs> fucking oh crazy God. to me. Um, Steve, uh, Pappy, I think his dad says, like, I don't want you to come see me anymore. I want you to just, like go out there and be the best of the best. So I think that's the tie-in, but I agree that it's not great. Um, also, that scene, Stevie, where Flash is like doing that and it's like all epic, I think it's pretty well done, except Flash looks really stupid running in that scene. Like It looks, it looks silly. like Sasquatch. That found footage of Sasquatch. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Who killed his mom, though? Because most you know, killings are done by the domestic partner. So, <laughs> Gorilla Grodd. <laughs> <laughs> but Stevie, to your point too, like we were talking about this earlier, like so now Cyborg can also like undo mechanical things that have been broken. Dude, so you have multiple characters who can like kind of reverse time a little it's bit. It's just overlapping nonstop. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, it just seems like I don't know. Maybe it's because of the slow motion and stuff, and I like really frantic energy <laughs> in my action movies. But it just feels like everyone's doing the same. Like everyone's taking turns to do the same thing throughout this entire movie all the time, and it drives me nuts. Yeah, it's really hard to argue with that. I mean, <laughs> it's nonstop, really. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. There, there are some nice touches in the the Whedon version that aren't in this movie. Actually, uh, one of them is when. Superman is fighting the rest of the heroes, the rest of the Justice League, which is a scene I really like in both versions, actually. In fact, in the theatrical, that's the one thing I came out and said, I liked that one scene a lot. Um, but in this version, it's stopped by Lois, as is the same in the original. But in this version, she just, like, happens to be there. <laughs> she just shows up, right place, right time. <laughs> Superman sees her, flies off with her. Well, she's on her daily lamentation. Right? <laughs> yeah. Look at the Superman <laughs> memorial where she buys coffee for cops every In the theatrical day. version, that's like orchestrated by Batman. Like he sets it up to bring her out if he, if Superman isn't, um, if he doesn't have his wits about him. He's going to bring in Lois to kind of trigger that emotional spark. And it's set up pretty good in the theatrical version. Like, they say, what if Superman comes back and he doesn't know who he is? Or what if he attacks us? Batman says, I have a secret weapon, basically. And you're led to believe, oh shit, he's going to kryptonite this motherfucker. No, it's Lois. <laughs> okay, Pap, can I bring up one other thing? I hate to keep like piling on this one because there were some things I do like. But like breaking movie logic drives me nuts every now and then. And the fact that like we get introduced to Diag Diana and Wonder Woman like early... Like, it's, like, right nearly at the start of the, of the movie. Mm -hmm. Like, and then we go to, um, what's the land she's from? The Mascara. Okay, we go there. And, like, after everything goes down with Steppenwolf and everything, everyone's like, but, you know, this person, you know, they can't do this, they can't do this. And her mom goes, but she will. If you're going to say, but she will, and not announce her name, you have to then introduce that character. Because we've already been introduced to her, so it makes no sense. <laughs> it's like setting up like the dot dot dot, and then it's like yeah, like if you're gonna say but she, well, like movie logic tells you, well, who's she? Then we get to Diana's scene, but instead it's like, oh, but we already know who that is. Also in that scene, Stephen Wolf says something like, "I have come to enlighten you to the great darkness," and he says darkness. it so strangely. I have come to enlighten you to the great darkness. Happy, were you happy to see Jesse Eisenberg return? <sighs> I, I don't care. I mean, I, yeah, I don't like... I just, <laughs> was I happy? Uh, a little bit in like a um, schadenfreude type sense. <laughs> like, yeah, like, oh, how delightful. This movie just got a little worse. Like I was expecting it to, <laughs> yeah. but... No, I don't... I always thought he was a terrible Lex Luthor. He's one of my least favorite parts of 
early DCEU. Were you were you happy to see him, Kyla? I was just amazed that they kept him. Like <laughs> of all things, of of all the stupid bullshit to cut out, that is number one, man. How do, how have they not casted Billy Zane yet? You know he's just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> they did cut out the uh, funniest and worst line from the theatrical version that he says, though. Because where the theatrical version ends, it's an after the credit scene. You see Jesse Eisenberg, Lex Luthor, and he's talking to uh, the Slade Wilson. And he says, shouldn't we have a league of our own? And then it like ends. And it's like, <laughs> you can't help but think of that Gina Davis oh, movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's no crying in Justice League. <laughs> shouldn't we have a league of our own? I got two character notes, Pap. Please. One, I love that Wonder Woman, her like real life persona is a sculptress. And, you know, Gal Gadot is kind of a sculpture. So. Ugh. Ooh. Okay, Ooh. so. <laughs> you get booed by my own brother. <laughs> Second point, and you announce there's two. First of all, she's a museum curator. She's not a sculptress, yeah. whatever the fuck sculptress that is. Sculptress isn't a term. Art restorator. It's a word, Mikey. Uh, and then my other one is I like how Aquaman, like, basically lives in the ocean. He should be well aware of that, like, place that's full of plastic. But he just, like, litters a bunch. Yep. He throws a whiskey bottle. He throws a shirt in there. Um, he doesn't even finish his all his whiskey either. He, like, leaves plenty in there. So I just find him to be a little bit off-putting as far as his care for the environment. <laughs> <laughs> he knows there's no hope for the ocean. It's true. He's like, fuck it, man. I'm going to be on land most of this movie anyways. <laughs> Speaking of off-putting, I laughed so many times just at Henry Cavill's like face when they bring him back. <laughs> and I know, like, aside from the mustache thing, there's a few scenes when he's like trying to like, I guess, grimace when he's looking at Batman that I just was laughing out loud. And then when he's in the uh, when he's in the cornfield later, uh, shout out Christopher Nolan, like Corey said. But when he's in the cornfield later, he's like slowly smiling and it just reminded me of that meme of like Mike Tyson slowly like breaking into a big old <laughs> grin. Like, oh, he's he's the best like smug face in movie business right now, I think. I broke my back. <laughs> Spinal. <laughs> I was dead. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to cruise through my notes real quick just so I leave no stone unturned because I'd never want to talk, think, or pod on this movie again. Um, <laughs> the can I be like you someday meme uh, fucking hilarious where Gal Gadot just goes no <laughs> to the little girl. <laughs> <laughs> fucking love it. Uh, the flame shooting arrow, way too goddamn long. I have no idea why it takes so long to shoot a flaming arrow. Um, Stevie, how do you feel about Gal Gadot exposition? In, as a rule, in general, shouldn't exist. I agree, <laughs> agree wholeheartedly. Uh, um, <laughs> I mean, it, the worst part is this: is the scene where they're talking about kind of the history of the mother boxes and Dark Side was here before. So bad. I actually liked those Oof. action scenes. I thought they kind of worked. Me too. Like Ooh. in the world that Snyder mm -hmm. was trying to build, but the exposition. Trust your audience. That is awful. I just. <laughs> It's mu it's well it's much better than in the Joss Whedon cut. Yeah, uh, I, don't know if you I thought it was that. the like, strongest part of the movie. There's like some really weird cuts. Did you like like the gods and stuff and oh, like the Green shit. Lanterns? That got me so hyped. Like that's one of the points in the movie. And there was a couple times this did happen. I admit where I was getting excited. I was like, well, this is really cool. And I noticed that they used as one of the gods Ares specifically. They used a D H David Thewlis. Mm -hmm. who played Ares in the Wonder Woman movie, except he was older. Mm. For you Harry Potter fans, that's Lupin. My um, man. I just really liked that small touch. They didn't call su a lot of attention to it, but I thought it was nice. But that o that overall scene was great. It had this, like, I mean, 300 vibe to it in a good way. And obviously, it's Snyder. And if they put that at the beginning, it's like a it's like a Lord of the Rings type, like, super flashback to like a like set the stage about the mother boxes like the one ring all that 
which would work perfect because the end with Steppenwolf fighting all of them on the bridge looks exactly like Gandalf fighting uh, Durin's yeah Durin's Bane the Balrog <laughs> ending number one there's a. even a whip there's even a whip <laughs> that grabs someone down off a ledge in that scene Cyborg saying fuck the world really stupid and lame and that they think it's badass. And it's he should have had it tattooed on his lip. He should have like pulled down his lip. And <laughs> tattooed right there. <laughs> Damaged across the board. <laughs> Mikey, you might appreciate this one. The mother box is essentially the Ark of the Covenant in the first Indiana Jones movie, where it just sits in the Pentagon for years and years, apparently, and is then found later. But that was a little weird. Um, let's see anything else? The dad sacrifice. Okay. Kyle, can you explain why the dad sacrifices himself that whole scene? Uh, I can. I can't make it make sense, but... Uh, yeah, it's stupid because he's assuming that his son will fail, basically. <laughs> it's his last <laughs> moment. I mean, they set it up earlier. They have this, like, electron laser that they can use on the mother box to make it, like, the hottest thing on the planet. So he knows that Steppenwolf is going to come take the mother box, so he uses it. And he unfortunately is in the room while that's done. So it's just a way to give the heroes um, the ability to track where the mother box is. Is it good? No. no. But that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> During the boring shit in Kansas while uh, Superman's talking to Ma Kent, he goes, It's really me, Ma. But like he doesn't put enough space between the words me and Ma. So it sounds like he's saying, <laughs> Me, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> like, <I'm laughs> <really Mima>. <laughs> It's really me, Ma. <laughs> Very weird. Probably would have redone that had I got the chance. Why does the blast heal the Flash? The same blast that kills everybody in the room, it heals him so he's able to run at super speed? You know what I'm talking I about? Thought, I thought I blinked wrong or like had a smudge in my glasses. That did happen, though. I had to watch it twice. I, I didn't get it till the second time, but it's like the blast that is Dark Seed entering this world heals the flash right <laughs> like <laughs> i thought <laughs> i thought that he was already healing fast yeah i just assume that's part of his powers because he is like crashing into walls at a billion <laughs> miles an hour so he's got to have some sort of like resilience he is isn't he he's fucking slamming <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought he was just going back in time, which would like undo the wound. I don't know how mm. logically that works. I just know like very basic back to the future style time travel, but <laughs> I thought that's what they were doing. Uh, last but not least, Kylo, I hope you appreciate this. Uh, I would watch a cyborg show that was basically just Johnny Quest of him hacking into things. Did you ever watch Johnny Quest, Kylo? <laughs> When you were younger? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't one of the things I liked to watch, but, you know, it was on because, like, there was nothing else on. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love the shit out of some Johnny Quest. I'll watch it any day. But that's all that I had. Let's go ahead and get into it. Yes or no's. We'll go east to east this time, and I won't mix it up. Jordan, what do you give oh, boy. Zack Snyder's cut of the Justice League? Uh, I, I'm pretty torn on this one because I... I don't think it's like a terrible, terrible movie, but it's really hard for me to like recommend that anyone sit through a four hour fucking movie. I fell asleep twice on night one of trying to get through this. <laughs> <laughs> and, that uh, was. <laughs> yeah. And then I had to finish the last hour and a half tonight. Um, I, uh, it may be like the softest yes I've ever Holy given. Shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. it, what? Oh I, hey man, I'm just going on gut instinct here. I, I think it it is. It's his gut, but uh, just Brother. be pre be prepared to like probably split it over multiple <laughs> nights and not be happy about it. So uh, that's that's my <laughs> final thoughts. Yeah. Dude. Fucking prepared. Scar could not have gotten me prepared. <laughs> what <laughs> in the fuck? <laughs> Be prepared. Yeah. Uh, holy shit. Uh, brother, Jordan's <laughs> brother, Josh, what do you give Justice League? Yeah. Um, I'm new to DC. I'm new to the MCU. I've been reading some of the comics lately. And I guess maybe part of this is in light of all that. But I give this a pretty hard yes. Um, I didn't like having to finish it by this Thursday at 9.45 p.m. because it <laughs> takes so long to get through and I was like using like multiple sessions but 
This is a fun movie where it's like the characters are so exaggerated. It's almost B movie at times, but then there's like fun action sequences. And I, I gotta be honest, like the villain thing, someone said there's a villain problem. Steppenwolf is kind of a badass, And also he's somewhat like, I feel for him. I feel like he's forced in the position he's in and he's kind of getting it from both sides. <laughs> And then he just ends up getting his head cut off and stomped <laughs> by like his master at the end. It's kind of like gutting almost, but there's a lot of weird things to like, and this is a lot of just content. And as spoilers, we like a lot of content. So, I, also, oh I'm never going to call this movie Justice League. I'm just going to call this Snyder Cut. Who threatened Snyder you to? <laughs> <laughs> um, we I'll may have you guys some, later. We we may have some more yeses. Uh, like I said, no Brett, no PK. We'll stick those in the hijack area normally at the end of the podcast, along with some other fun chats. But Stevie, bring us back down to earth on Justice League. <laughs> yeah. What is wrong with you two? <laughs> Wait, did Josh say yeah, yes? Yeah, he gave yeah. it a hard yes. Uh, yes, yes, I liked it. It's fun to watch. <sighs> I mean... If you you know what if you like this movie good on you. If you're one of the people that you Called know it a has movie. Been clamoring for this experiment for years. I don't, I don't think either of us <laughs> said that. Um, <laughs> and you had a wild good time watching it. You know, good on you. Restore the Snyderverse. Yeah, um, but I, this movie is just not for me. Um, it doesn't play like a movie. It doesn't play like a series. I shouldn't have to know every comic book's, uh, every comic hero's entire background to understand what's going on or to understand why that's fun. Um, this is a rushed experiment. And the only reason it ever took off the ground to begin with is because of the success of Infinity War and Endgame. And Endgame being the highest grossing movie of all time. And if it wasn't, Snyderverse would never even gotten touched. Um, it's not fun to watch. Uh, very few scenes are. Uh, the dialogue is not great. It's not very cohesive. And I can't recommend a four-hour movie to anybody. So uh, this is a no. I think the rating I gave it was a five out of ten. Uh, this movie is just not my cup of tea. If you like it, good on you. But it's just not for me. So this is going to be a no dog. <laughs> no four-hour uh, movie at all. Huh? <laughs> well, not, no, not of this. No. <laughs> Kylo, for the audience at home, could you please just describe the meme that you put in the group chat? It's very funny. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, Woody Harrelson at the end of Venom when he says, if I get out of here, there's going to be carnage, except it's Martian Manhunter. And he says, when I get out of here, there's going to be Martian Manhunter. <laughs> <laughs> very uh, good stuff. Describing uh, memes. Good shit. Mikey, you're up next. Uh, I think I've made my point pretty clear throughout this entire podcast that I did not enjoy my experience with this uh i i i'm happy that Zack snyder got his chance to like make the movie that he wanted after all of the shit that he went through during the production of this i think that's a great redemption story for him but as far as me liking this movie i i don't like it at all and it's just like you're trying to cram a square peg into a round hole in this format of just like we're in infinity war we're in the end game right now and this we're like three movies in and you gotta know all the context from batman versus superman to to really get the context of what's happening in in snyder cut and it's just way too much and it's just like i can't i cannot believe that he just had all that freedom to make it this way and there's three movies in this and it's not it's not good like i don't know how anybody would have made a good movie of trying to cram this all into like the first three movies and the mother boxes are stupid it's got the stench of mother box all over this <laughs> thing and it's four hours so i cannot recommend a four hour experience that i did not like at all and <laughs> yeah. if, it, I, if i had seen it in theaters i think i would have I think I probably would have walked out of just like, this is way too long. It's too much for me right now, and I don't have the time. Uh, so I'll say hard no. Okay, I think that's two and two. I'll swing the scales back to a no. I actually gave it the exact same score 
uh, that Stevie did. Five out of ten um, on Letterbox. Yeah, to Mikey's point, I, I think there was a little bit of fucked up studio stuff that happened to Zack Snyder along the way. I think that again, to Mikey's point, I don't think this like the DCEU could have ever really worked in the way that they were going for it. And I think that when I look at my favorite DCEU films. They're the ones that are the least connected to the rest of them, like Shazam being like the most one of that, right? You don't even see Superman's face in Shazam, and I fucking love that movie to death. And so it's not that these characters or stories are inherently bad, but they were just trying to rush into this epic movie that came out right before Infinity War, and it's just even, you know, not even the sh- shadow of a movie that Infinity War is. Um, the other thing is, too, I just don't like what Zack Snyder thinks is cool. And that's just become like really apparent, like over the course of like every movie I've ever seen of his, like some I've watched closely, some I've just been on like in the background, but I don't, I'm not really into the slow motion. I'm not into the music that he chooses. I don't like the, like the color grading and the color palette that he chooses to use. I just don't like a lot of the things that he thinks is cool. And when you recommend this movie, there's an opportunity cost. You're only going to watch so many movies in your life. Even if you're the kind of person who's watching thousands and thousands of movies, there's still you gotta you're gonna die with movies on your watch list. Great movies. You could probably watch three of those fucking movies in the time it takes to watch this one piece of shit. You know what I mean? Like it's such a <laughs> it's such a horrible way to use your time on Earth, unless this is something that really, really, really makes you happy. Wow. If it does, good on you, but this is a pretty hard no uh for me. <laughs> Kylo, last but not least. I think you could watch the entire Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles trilogy in the time it takes to watch Justice League. So make your choice, people. Uh, yeah, this is Corey, <laughs> Kylo Ren memes. This movie had a weird effect on me, where, like, after I had finished watching it, which took a few days, I was like, that was pretty good, you know? I like s- some things in there, and uh, I-, I have a-, a pretty positive take. But while I was watching it, uh, I kept wanting to put it down, you know, <laughs> on whatever I was on, on my computer or on my phone. I kept wanting to go do something else. When I'm watching something I really enjoy, I will stay up way too late watching it. You know, if it's like Cobra Kai or some other series that I like or even a really good movie. I, like Heat. I have to keep watching it because it's that good. I didn't have that with this, but oddly I came out thinking it's all right. I'm going to give this a yes. I think it's I think it's all right. It's pretty good. I don't think it's a great movie like some people are talking about online saying how amazing it is, you know, fucking five stars. It's okay, you know? It is too long, and there are things that should not be in this movie, I think. Um, I am a little bit, I think, on the in the minority on this that I've come around now on Jared Leto Joker, where I now like him because of this. Ugh. And I was pretty anti-Jared Leto Joker when I saw Suicide Squad. But also, before Suicide Squad, I was, like, saying how great he's going to be because he's a great actor. Uh, I like that last bit, but we talked about the movie. There's a lot of um, beats in this movie that I appreciate, but, like, the, the cohesiveness is just, like, strange. And it's... Um, Stevie talked about movie structure and that it's a certain way for a reason. Um, this lacks that structure, and I think it's to its detriment, but it's not without merit. So anyway, that's it for me. Three and three, perfectly balanced as all things <laughs> should be. To quote, inevitable. <laughs> to quote some superhero movie. Uh, I do have a trivia, but we do this every episode. It's a tradition. The audience love it. Stevie, you love it more than anybody. So I'm going to come to you. What do we have coming down the pipe? No. <laughs> um. Man, oh man. Tradition unlike any other. A tradition pull up the trello. unlike any other. I know, I'm pulling up the Trello right now. God. That, so that's how that feels. All right. Okay. Give me one second here. Ba, 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 ba. I will say this, though. Mad props to mad props to Pappy and Josh. Pappy especially, because after we found out that someone had tried to carbon copy our uh, podcast, Pappy got a... Uh, hair up his ass, and decided to edit and edit and edit for an entire weekend and got so much done. But, uh... <sighs> Pap, I can't find it. I don't even know what we do have coming on. I got pipe. you. Mad yeah. Max? Mad Max Fury Road, Patreon only. So if you're 
not a patron and you want to hear us talk about Mad Max, sign up for the Patreon just for one month so you can hear it. Then you can cancel or you can keep supporting us. Are we really doing that? Is that for real Patreon only? That's yes. dirty. Dude, they, the patrons. That's the point, of, the point of Patreon, Josh. Why would you say that? Okay. At a hard okay. edit point from that. Why are you insulting our patrons? Jeez. <laughs> We got some great stuff on Patreon, our Patreon for you guys to listen to. Go join to, the, the other podcast, Josh, that tried to copy us. Oh my gosh, I'm just saying our fa- that hurts our non-Patreon fans to hear that Stevie's favorite movie of all time is well, going to be behind it the paywall. You, them you to you become a stauncher. As a stauncher. And it sounds like just announced on this podcast, Mikey Pappy drunk ju- uh, Zack Snyder <laughs> Justice League commentary. Oh, I'm in. Maybe this weekend. We'll see. That'd be so fun. Who knows? Maybe I'll end up liking it if I'm black. <laughs> That's how I am with Avatar. I hate that movie sober. Kyla, you're doing such a good job, though. Anything else you see <laughs> on the Trello board worth worth noting? We have a Punishment movie coming out for everyone, free for the world, Jack and Jill, awful Adam mm. Sandler movie, but we had a lot of fun <laughs> with that one. So <clears throat> look forward yeah. to that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, not lost. Not lost at all. It's good. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> there might be some, well, we might have to dig into the hijack. We'll figure it out. I'm not. I'm not too worried about it. But what everyone should be worried about: trivia, high stakes, the highest of stakes. Tonight's winner will get to toss it to Spoiler Man, the most coveted of all prizes. So <laughs> we're gonna go by the order that you guys appear on my Skype call because that'll be fastest for me. Rapid fire. I don't know much about Brett Metacritic. Uh, Brett's always talking about Metacritic, but I, I was gonna use Rotten Tomatoes, but it always gets confusing. Um, so Metacritic is based out of a one or a zero to a hundred, I guess, score percentage. What is the Metacritic score of 2008's The Dark Knight minus the Metacritic score for 1966's Batman the Movie? Some days you just can't get rid of the bomb. <laughs> oh, that one. Uh, yeah. Um, Jordan, you are first on my list. Wait, sorry. What is Metacritic based but out of? It's 100. Uh, oh, Dark shit. Knight minus Batman the movie. Adam West Batman for the kids at home. So I'm guessing Dark Knight somewhere in the 90s, and the, the other one is not. Eh. I'll say like 69. Good oh, guess. Nice. Everyone loves that, Josh. <laughs> What's the old one called again? What year is the old one? Batman colon the movie from 1966. <laughs> Man, that wasn't that bad. I've seen that. They're all riding a boat at the end. Um, it's fun. Hand me down the shark repellent bat spray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen that movie a lot. I that was in the 50s somewhere, and this was like in the low. Dark Knight was probably in the mid 90s. I'll say like 45. Give a Michael Jordan. Shout out. Secondary <laughs> number for Michael Jordan. Kylo Corey, proprietor of the Big Dumb Movie podcast, uh, whose avatar you share with your Skype avatar, what do you give? Or what would you uh, say the Dark Knight minus Batman the movie is? Uh, 32. 32? Mikey? Um, I'll go... 35. 35 and Stevie oh, favorite Queen song let's go to the year of 39 in the year of 39 so actual ret- wait 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 wait. Yeah. I texted Brett this question he texted me an answer do you care to hear it no not he really. looked it up <laughs> <laughs> what, okay, what did Brett say how can he I assume he point? didn't look it up but he said 13 it's just very low compared yeah Brett, to what we're well, Brett definitely looked it up because he said the exact right answer uh huh <laughs> It's exactly 13. The Metacritic score of The Dark Knight is 84. The Metacritic score of 84. Batman colon the movie is 71. Only 13 points Oof. separate them on Metacritic. Wow. Brett cheating on his birthday to win trivia. <laughs> but I'm sure the, he never cheats on the real pod. Though. I highly doubt that. But of the <laughs> people who are here and not cheaters, Kylo, you are our winner. Feel free nice to... Should take a little victory lap in the winner's circle, plug something, say whatever you want, and then uh, toss it to Spoiler Man. Jared Leto is the best Joker. Take it away, <gasps> Spoiler oh. Man! Oh. <sighs> Special thank you to our patrons. Matt Troll, Brother Brian, Druid King, 
Nick. If you'd like to request an episode, hear your name read by Spoiler Man, or even just help us make podcasts, please check us out on patreon.com slash spoilers podcast. Hey everybody, this is Brent from Fort Wayne. Uh, couldn't be with you tonight. I was out having some birthday prime rib and just kind of relaxing. I uh, hope you guys had a good time. Um, so for me with this movie, uh, it was an improvement over Joss Whedon's cut in every facet of filmmaking, in my opinion. Um, it actually had a tone. Um, I know some people don't like Zack Snyder's dark tone that he does all the time, but it was better than a movie that was half dark and half campy, like the one we actually got. Um, I thought the colors looked great. Uh, the battle scene, one thing I was really hoping for after seeing the trailer was that the battle scene with Dark Side um, towards the beginning would be. Well, actually, that it would be in there, and it wouldn't be some weird hybrid with Steppenwolf. And he actually got it, and it was long, and it was really good. I really, really enjoyed that. I thought it was really well done. Um, I mean, it's not often you get to see characters like Ares and Hercules in uh, a good, or at least passable, Green Lantern. Um, yeah, I th- would say my own main knock was it looked like the special effects maybe... They were lacking somehow. I don't really know. Uh, you could tell a lot during the Wonder Woman scene, I feel like, where she's saving the robbers, uh, the people in the bank. But, you know, that's whatever is going to happen, it, I guess, in a situation like this. But um, Flash and Cyborg actually were actually shown and had some character development. Um, you could even maybe argue that Cyborg was the main character. Uh, he probably had the best, uh, biggest arc from one personality type to the next um honestly i don't care about runtime i don't get why it's that big of a deal it was broken down into episodes um i don't hear people complaining about a six seven episode netflix show that they binge watch and it takes four hours i mean what's the difference um i don't see one um there might have been four hours but after talking to wifey we i mean we just were never bored we were just geeked out after watching we watched it straight four hours and we both just looked at each other. We're like, man, that was really good. We both really liked it. Uh, I'm surprised that people are so surprised about the slow-mo. Have you never seen a Zack Snyder movie? Have you ever, if you haven't, and it's your first one, stay away from 300 because that's going to blow your socks off because that's about 30 minutes of actual movie time and the rest is slow-mo. So uh, this is a movie that we will definitely watch again, probably many times. We both really liked it. Um, I see this as a victory for DC, Warner Brothers, HBO Max, everybody involved. And this is a hard yes from this household, from Brett. And uh, miss you guys. Hope you guys had a good pod. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Oh, hey, it's your boy, superhero correspondent PK, coming at you with a quick... Zack Snyder's Justice League review. Um, obviously, I think everybody thought it was weird that every time the Wonder Woman came on the screen, we heard some like 300 style slash Troy style of music. Um, <laughs> but besides that, this movie is way better than the theatrical cut. Um, I actually went to the world premiere of Justice League, if you don't know. Um, the spoilers, the original spoilers episode for Justice League was one of my first as the superhero correspondent. So go back and listen to that because I kind of talk about it. But yeah, I would have much preferred to see this version in the theater, even sitting there for four hours. I wouldn't have mind. Um, I can't believe how much they cut out of Barry Allen and Vic Stone's story. Like, in the theatrical version they really didn't do all that much but in this version you know flash and cyborg are what make the movie they're they're the ones who come through at the end pretty much besides superman and i haven't been a huge fan of ezra miller as the flash but his performance in this movie kind of changed my mind the scene at the end with him running back in time was so cool i love that line and like the line delivery where he's like gotta go faster than the speed of light you gotta break the rule barry you gotta do it now or something i don't remember what he says but i thought that was really good um yeah i think it's cool no matter if you hate it love it don't care 
Um, I think this movie's gonna go down in history to some degree just for the fact that how it came to be and the whole fans rallying and hashtag release the Snyder Cut and now it's hashtag restore the Snyderverse. Um, I like that that happened. I think it's really cool for Zack Snyder and, and the fans of the movie, but at the same time, like now every movie that comes out, if, it, if you don't like it, fans are just, oh, release the insert director's name cut. Da, da 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 like the studio screwed him but it's just like all right we can we can chill out on that but um i'm happy for Zack snyder that he got to fulfill his vision and, and see it through i i mean i hope he gets to do at least a sequel to see how i want to see dark side come and destroy the earth and see how they get through that but if if they decide to not do it they won't really bother me but yeah, I think it was way better. I'll give it a yes. I give every movie a yes. Not, we'll, we'll find one these days where I don't give it a yes, but yes from your superhero correspondent. Brett did cheat. He thought he wanted me to cheat. That's my bad. That's okay. What kind of system do you guys have worked out? <laughs> yeah, when I ask you the question, you cheat and send me the answer, right? <laughs> what a thing to say. Et to Kylo. <laughs> I don't actually what? feel that way, by the way. <laughs> what is it about that man that just is so off-putting? I hate it's... him. That he's a cult leader? Is he? Yes. Yeah. The Joker? He is? Yeah, I feel like Jared Leto I, is in charge of a cult. You could say oh, anything about that. him and I would believe it. What do you mean? What kind of cult? Like a sex cult? Like, Doesn't yeah, they wear white out, like, robes. an island for yeah, like a month or whatever? And he runs like an island and they, everybody wears like white robes and he's in charge of it all. And uh, like he didn't like know. Firefest with 30 COVID. seconds. He didn't months. know COVID, right, Stevie? That was yeah, thing. he didn't know about COVID until like two weeks later. What do you mean two weeks later? He's, he, he was in the his, desert he tripping on mushrooms with his group. Because when you like join his cult, you're not allowed to have any technology. You can't have any contact with anybody but who, who's ever on the island. Making a Snyder Cut folder. It's the implication of it, Jordan. I don't like the man. It's the vibe of the thing, Jordan. <laughs> it's the vibe. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I'm saying I hate him and I can't put a finger on why. That it's might be why. All I, I hate that he has an Oscar. That's so stupid. Yeah. You know, like Dallas Buyers Club? No, it's fine, and he's good in it. But like, when I think about all the people who don't have an Oscar, and Jared Leto is one of the ones who does have an Oscar, it makes me sad. Yeah. Josh, I got a question for you. Like, In this format, this 4 by 3 thing, there's a lot of headroom on like every shot, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> like a crazy amount of headroom. It's there like, is. It doesn't work. It's ugly. <laughs> So you'd you'd Oklahoma. want them to crop into this image, and yeah, and make, make it, it look like a normal movie. We go full screen on normal aspect ratios instead <laughs> of this bullshit with massive headroom that adds nothing. There's just so I think sky I above wish, I wish I would have said this on the pod, but I think you do use less of your screen at home. Oh, for fuck's but, sake! But you actually see more of what they shot so in a smaller a, version. So you get like a more detailed version of less. Is that necessarily better? Josh, anything that doesn't crop out 30% of my television is probably better. Anything that preserves Zack Snyder's creative vision <laughs> is probably for the best. That's... So you'd rather see more pixels than literally see... That's not like how it works. I'm actually shot in shot. such a high resolution that it wouldn't change. Uh, like I don't the, have an you, IMAX television, Josh. Yeah, I, nobody has an IMAX screen at home, so it's like it just tells me extra. that Zack Snyder's a vain bastard, or HBO <laughs> is greedy as hell. Jerry Go Lito scrub, scrub through the movie on Max. HBO Max and look at everybody's headroom. There's just sky above everybody's head when we're talking. Yeah, that's the original vision. All that headroom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is going. Like, I could have bagged on that for a five minutes. Just like, there's nothing that this four by three aspect ratio. Gives so you, you, like, you would have rather just not seen the sky at all and seen more oh details than his like nose. No, that's a real question. Yes, what does the sky offer me when it's 
I'm watching it right now. I'm watching the Flash save these people, and there's miles of sky above his head. It's like it doesn't offer me anything. There's not. There's no information there that I need. He's framed weird. Everybody's framed weird in every scene because there's just so much headroom. Real quick, we lost the uh, Jack and Jill episode. Yep. Ah. Most, mostly. <laughs> All right. Well, I might have to go, guys. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I don't. I can might be able to pull out Josh's track from the hijack, but I don't know. Oh, Josh's track. <laughs> it happens. I lost. I lost. I could get it back. I could get it back. <laughs> no, then it is gone. <laughs> I haven't looked at. I'm. Sh- I'm sure I can try, but. Probably not for a couple of weeks. That takes time. Thanks for bringing Josh, that up, Kylo. Josh, I didn't know twice. that happened, man. Josh, twice. I can't believe Jordan did this movie. Yes. Josh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it wasn't Josh who lost his track. It was Joss who lost his track. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> lost the track, Joss. <laughs> All right. Ah. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. See ya, ya, Kylo. That was spoilers.